I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Lance Henriksen, who co-stars in Falling as a conservative and homophobic father who begins to fade into dementia. Lance, this man is quite confronting, not only because of the way in which he treats his son, but also because of the rage and resentment he appears to hold inside, and now his mental health is fading as well. There's so much for you to work with here, isn't there? Yeah, there was a lot to work with. You know, I got to tell you, I could start by giving an excuse and the excuse would be toward the end of his life, all the things that, that had fallen away, like two wives and children that have left and, and, and decided on how they wanted to live and things like that. That's one thing. The other part is that uh, if somebody doesn't really hear you, and they're trying to fix you and you don't want to be fixed. I just want to be left alone and live and live out my days, you know, and, and it, with this good natured son that comes to try to not only rescue me, but rescue my body he was worried about how ill I was getting and things like that. Yeah. I still yeah. didn't want to. He's a stubborn man. He has horses and he, lives a simple life and he and he's made all the mistakes that the human condition can lay on you can can create and so there's a lot of rage in there and a lot of confusion and deep deep confusion and so that's what john is dealing with my son he moves in I, i'm going to fix this I love my dad. I mean, I have great memories and I have shitty memories, but literally it's like none of us get through this life unscathed. You know, we make mistakes. We, we do all kinds of things and pay for it. We also pay for it. It's not like you don't get away free, you know? Uh, and and the, the crazy part for me was playing a character that had to look at uh, all the stuff that I wanted to let go of by finding the arts. I found great inspiration and comfort and kindness and it taught me how, what kindness can do, you know, and what the arts can do, whether it's music, pottery, dance, it doesn't matter, acting, especially acting. I, I've surrounded with incredibly talented people my whole career, I've been, you know, almost the luckiest guy in the world. I mean, I've, I've done 260 movies and some are small and some are, are what you call uh, jet lag movies where you arrive and go directly to the set and they don't care what you do. <laughs> you know, it's this is part of a flashy moment, but they give you a paycheck and I have raising children. I mean, I'm, oh, yeah. So. So all of the miraculous events along the way that I've had and been given, it's like a gift, you know, if you're open enough to see, you know, what, what's landed in your lap or in your hands or in your mind. It's yeah. a really, I've been very lucky, very, very lucky. When you talk about millennium, one of the things that struck me immediately was that I, I wanted to approach this series. I didn't know it was a series at first. They, they said to me, read this script. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. And I went, <laughs> all right, I read it. And I said, it's very dark. Oh, yeah. uh, it's uh, you know a well-written script. It's good, the character's great. And then I started looking into who he was, who, who it was patterned after. And <clears throat> anyway, I said to Chris Carter, what, what this is, I found out it was uh, television. And I went, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'll take a meeting with him and talk to him, but I, I don't know about this. And, and I said to him, Chris, this is so dark. What is gonna keep an audience coming back and seeing this? And he said, all he said to me was the yellow house. And I went, I got to absorb that one. What, what is, you know, because I know that my family and I live in a yellow house and I, and so the family, and then everything expanded out from there. 
And I realized I'm going to be playing a character that, that doesn't really judge anybody. He has to get them off the street and I have to unravel why people do this. Why, why are these events are social, you know, sociological pattern and why is it, you know, and it was a great experience on that level. It was really something again, but it, it's a gift. Yeah. I got a gift and that was, I worked as hard as I could on it. Yeah. And so like, when you think about something like falling, right, what really hit me was how a lot of what underpins Willis's motivations um, appear to be that he's just simply incapable of expressing any emotions other than something that's negative or anger or whatever it may be. And you know what? That's a really common thread that many of us have grown up with. Like I recognize Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's in every family. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. I mean, there are saints out there. I know. Yeah. You know, my family is sure weren't. My mother came from 10 children, you know, brothers and sisters. I had aunts and uncles and and unfortunately, uh, a lot of them met their denies, uh, their demise and with drugs and all of that when I was young, you know, and they would, they would gladly throw me in front of a taxi to, to get the insurance, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, so all of that, yes, there was a, a lot of very negative, dark stuff, but it's almost like parents going, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying. So in other words, they're going to try to fix you. Get as tough as I am. Yeah. And and you're going to survive. It's all going to be great. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, that's right. And whereas said, uh, whereas love is love and 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 that and, and, and it's probably what they needed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't walk out that door. I won't. I won't let you back in. You know, it's threats. All of it. You know, and unfortunately, I, I only went to three years of grammar school. I mean, it, it literally was like a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And then I left it. I said, no, this is bullshit, you know, for me. I was already too damaged. I mean, I couldn't sit there calmly and listen to somebody uh, tell me what the past was and what the future is going to be. You know, <laughs> you couldn't do it. So I, I took off, but anyway, it, yeah. it took till I was 30 to really read. I started acting and I couldn't read. I had to, I got my first audition by putting it all on tape. I had some guy put it on tape for me. So then I learned all the lines by, by that, you know? Yeah. I mean, so when there's a will, there's a way, but, but I, I greeted the arts. I, I really enjoyed being around them. I think my very first job was being a mime. Yeah. You know, no words. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. You, yeah. You know, um, speaking of what we were just saying with this character, right, the, this toxic loop of anger and resentment that he has, right, it has grave implications for his relationships, which we see in the film. Um, but it also has implications for the way we, the audience, perceive him. And I, I was wondering as I was watching you, because there was something about, there was a glimmer in your eye or something that made me feel pity or at least sympathy for him. What were you doing to, to give him that nuance so he wasn't just a monster, he was a person? Yeah, I, I, I remember a moment when Severia, uh, who plays me younger is at the birthday party and he she says put the cigarette out you know it's because there's kids there and all that and he looks at her and saying he looked at her and at the same moment he was saying fuck you fuck this and walks out he was doing two things to himself one is he was going to regret it because he just pushed away all the love he could possibly have gotten at that moment. Yeah. At the same time, angry for it. At the same moment. So it it's really comes in the writing. Vigo, Vigo had this incredible ability to 
we all lived it. We didn't act it. None of us were acting it. And I, I can't begin to tell you how I arrived at certain things, but there were, there were many conversations between Vigo and I. If you remember, there was a, a moment where uh, the young me looks at my, my baby and says, I'm a, I was, when, when my daughter was born, I, I got her for the first time away from the nurse and I had her alone for the first time. And I was so happy looking at this little product of, of all the love in the world, right? And I said to her, you know, I felt, I, I said to her, nobody was around me. And I said, I'm sorry I brought you into this world so you could die. And, and the part that's not in the movie is where I said to her, I'll be there for you no matter what. Yeah. The whole, no matter what. And, and, and it was, and he put it in the movie because it was so odd. It, it was even odd after I did it. I went, what did I just say to her? You know what I mean? It's, it, it's almost uh, like punk poetry mm. in a way. But I felt just so happy to have her in my arms. But so any, anyway, the reason I'm bringing it up is that there, the search uh, uh, for, for that character as I was doing it was coming, my whole life was coming through it. And I don't know, I, I don't, I don't want to ever get caught acting. I don't, I don't like, I don't like it. And I don't like, you know, I mean, I, I just uh, worry about the cliches involved and all of that crap, you know, where you're, yeah. you're suddenly pandering for acceptance or that you be liked or all of that. Instead, just living as someone who is in, in a bad place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But you, but you have to back it up because I think, I think in so many ways, uh, if you, if you go for the pandering to an audience and, and fake stuff for effect, or, you know, you, what you end up doing is betraying them. And as the movie goes on, by the time you get to the end, if you betray them again, you will never get them back. Yeah. We didn't betray what we were doing. You know what I mean? With, yeah. with a bunch of acting. You know, you know, yeah, you know. yeah. And that's what makes it feel so authentic. And I mean, that brings me to the that scene towards the end when endless years of emotional withholding and abuse even blow over in this very confronting and compelling scene between the two of to the, to the two men when they explode at each other. Take us back to shooting that. Was it particularly a difficult thing to do? It was very difficult because first of all, I like Bigo so much and, you know, I mean, uh, I, let me set it up with something. What, what, what Vigo did was, this is how he includes everybody. He, he got a bunch of flags from every country, uh, you know, that, that uh, was working on the movie. People from England, people from Norway, Sweden, America, everywhere. We were up in Canada. And, and he, he strung them between all the trucks and they're big, they're like five by four feet, pure flags. And everybody felt included. And then he would take all his pictures of his family and put them in the makeup trailer. So we were going for coffee and be looking at those. And then suddenly people were adding their pictures. So the whole place was a comforting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, place. And, and when we were gonna do that, fight scene, that, that, that whole argument. One of the things uh, was difficult is, is the first day we tried it, it was, it was all right. I mean, it was, it was all right, but we weren't happy. And, and we decided, uh, Vigo decided, let, let's take a day off and, and, and take a breather from it. Cause it was, a, it was a, you could call it a good rehearsal, but we didn't want a rehearsal. We wanted a performance, you know, that was true and real. So I go back to the hotel and I thought about it all night, barely slept, you know, and, and 
had the day off and then the next day we came in and I remember when we were working on it, the, uh, it just suddenly took off. There was no acting anymore. It was all relationship and it was all, and I remember we finished it and we were wiped out. And I walked around the corner away from the scene and there was a video village in, uh, behind the wall that was next to where we were shooting. And the crew was jammed in there. They wanted to see it. You know, they, didn't, they, they couldn't get in other places because the house was small, you know, it was. And so, and some of them were crying. And I, I went, what the, holy shit. You know, I mean, it was like, maybe we did it. You know, maybe, maybe it worked. It had to be good. It was the truth. It was all the truth. It wasn't, and then there were miraculous moments like that throughout the movie. I mean, they were, that, that would, would arrive. Those moments would just arrive and you go, wow, wow. Yeah. I had others that were, I mean, I, that's why I'm saying it was probably one of the best films I've ever been involved in. Yeah. For me, you know, it was a, a great role, a great role. Well, so let's talk about another moment just that, that affected me and that's the the ending because that for me it felt like the two men came to some form of like tacit understanding and maybe even acceptance and i'd go so far to say that it even felt a little hopeful that they were able to now just exist or coexist without willis screaming at john what what did you think of the ending were you satisfied oh i loved it yeah I mean, it was, it was unexpected because I remember we're sitting in the kitchen and I was doing a crossword puzzle and he was up taking a bath and he, he comes down and water starts leaking through the ceiling of the kitchen. And, and uh, I went, oh, I should have done something about that a long time ago. Uh, you know, put a, a spout, you know, over, overflow the spout on it. And then he, he went, oh shit, I'm gonna, he runs upstairs and he turns it off and he comes back and, and I'm doing the, I'm doing the crossword puzzle. And I, and I asked him a question about what would be, uh, you know, three, three or four words, yeah. you know, letters in this thing. And he gave me the answer and I, and I realized, thank God I didn't, but I realized that I was on the verge of tears running down my face, but I couldn't let that happen. I could not let it happen. Yeah. And yet, the the movie just took a different a different everything, all the way to the end. I remember uh, the the biggest thing I would say in my own defense was I I have three horses, and I love them very much. <laughs> that is, people go, what, what, what are you saying? It's true though. Yeah, that, he was capable of Sundance. Some guy was asking me a question and they were ridiculous and they were very intellectual and all that shit. And I looked at him and, and I said, you know, I have three horses and I love them very much. And he didn't get it. And so he repeated the question and I said it again. <laughs> You know, sometimes the chips pass each other and you didn't even know they were there. But you know, yeah, you're right. If if you had cried at that table, I would have probably called bullshit, maybe. Like it Absolutely. Would have been real. Exactly. You see how you see how dangerous acting can be? Yeah. That would pandering. Yeah. No, there's nothing resolved between my son and I. Except that moment only. That's right. And that's enough for, for us. I, I'll take it. You know, you'll take your little. I, I, you just, you, you called me when you asked that question because that's exactly what happened. I mean, I, the most that you said, you've seen any good, <laughs> you've seen any good bucks? And I said, yeah, I saw a 10 pointer. You know, that's as close as I get as civility. You know? That's it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. So, I've got, yeah. To, yeah, I've got to let you go. We've run out of time, but I have one quick question. So very briefly, I can't help myself. 
obviously a lot of people look at you and say, oh, that's Bishop from Ridley Scott's Alien Saga. I mean, that's one of the greats of all time. Have you got one particular very, very quick highlight that you always remember is that that was the best thing about working on that project? Well, it's a mix. It's such a mix. I mean, when you've done as many, you know, I did, I did, <laughs> no, I've done a lot of Westerns. I've done a lot of horror films. I've done a lot of, I've done all kinds of stuff. And I, I think the best thing that ever happened to me was doing uh, Ed Harris directed Appaloosa. Yeah. And that's where Vigo and I met. Cause I, that, you know, I, I got a role in that. And it, and it was, yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um, all right, mate. Well, it's been hey, a thank you, man. I, you know, you, you pulled the string and I start talking and I, and I, I'm not afraid to talk about shit. Well, you know? It's been a real pleasure.